And welcome back, everybody. Here we are back on the the ancient battlefield of the ancient world. AKA, we're back on Total War Rome 2. And we have got a 3 versus 3 going on today. So, this one was sent in by none other than Dairy Farmer. Dairy Farmer's over here playing RDI. We've got, uh, for the rest of the attackers, we've got uh, Miss Aisley over here being commanded by GK and Syracuse here being commanded by Big Larry. For the defenders, we have got Carthage being commanded by Dan. We've got Bowie Eye being commanded by the Canadian Historian. And finally, we have got Pontus being commanded by Leovi, I think is how you say it. Um, so, for the attackers, we've got Derry here, who's obviously a, you know, a, a, one of the common players that you see here. For the defenders, uh, I believe this is Dan and Goose from the Hungry Wolves, um, which majority of you guys should know who that is. The Hungry Wolves are the allied discord to the Dragon Corps. Um, primarily headed up by Joe on it, who is another one of the backseat generals, as, a as well as myself, Gorm, Mjolnir, and Bearded Warman. Make sure to check out all of their channels. They are listed in the description. They are all putting out excellent content, and uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun. You know, you really, between the four of us, it's pretty hard-pressed not to have quite a bit of content at your fingers, so... Now, right, getting into this for the attackers, what we have going here, we have RDI making a strong push onto this corner, primarily being defended by Pontus, it looks like. Then we've got Syracuse that is tucking themselves away into this little corner right here, with Masasely kind of extending himself out to the right-hand side to land onto this wall. Now, I don't know that I like the push over here, by himself at least, uh, primarily due to what it's going to happen right here. So Carthage is just going to stonewall him right here, while you can see Bowie Eye has got Archer set up to just shoot right into his backs while he tries to go into that. So to be perfectly honest with you, if I was Masasely, I think I would kind of, you know, work with Syracuse on pushing this way. I don't think I would be putting too many troops trying to push this direction. I think Carthage and Bowie Eye are well prepared to kind of double team, team him in that situation. So just, I, that's not what I would do. Pontus defending this main area here. Interestingly, he brought a lot of hoplites here. So you can see he is, his initial line is just set up as hoplites. What it, I think that it is a common misconception here that people, you know, if I set up a line of hoplites, uh, you know, there could be, un, you know, a massive wall of armor and you'll never get through it, right? The, the downside I see to it is you, by bringing all the hoplites, you kind of rid yourself of one of your biggest advantages in this situation, which is javelin throws, right? As your unit, or as the attacking units are getting off of their towers onto the walls, your units can be sitting here just javying the hell out of them, or charging in, things like that, catching them while they're out of formation. While a hoplite is more of a standstill unit, and obviously hoplites don't get javelins. So, a little bit of a, I don't know that I would, and I'm, I just, I'm not a huge hoplite guy. And yes, there are going to be plenty of people who are going to hate on me for that, and that's fine. It's just not my play style. I'm not a huge fan. Everybody has their own play style that they prefer to play, you know, a certain way. And that's okay. So, uh, Carthage here, we got some Mercenary Scutari sitting in the back. All of his Cretans and his Balearics setting up, once again, in a position that... Masasely kind of finds himself in a bit of an awkward spot here. Now, Masasely, he led off with some of his better troops. He, This is all Desert Legionaries here. Um, so he's just now bringing forward things like Numidian Light Infantry. He still has more Desert Legionaries in the back. 
Syracuse hasn't even landed yet. RDI hasn't even landed yet. And Syracuse actually split. He actually sent a lot of units over here to go onto the walls with RDI, it looks like. I don't know if he's realizing maybe this is not the best place to go, or I don't know, it could be. Maybe RDI asked him to go over this way. I don't know. Let me know if any of the attackers are watching the replay. Let me know in the comment section uh, what your guys' strategy was here. I always like to hear, you know, what were the thoughts of, uh, honestly, either side, the attackers or defenders. Let me know what your strategy was in the defense, or if you're the attacker in the attack, what was your, your thoughts on how you wanted to play this? Desert Legionary just got slaughtered. This one, I believe, came off of this tower. You can see he just got swarmed. Just what I was saying, that's going to be something that Pontus is going to miss over on the other side, is he's not going to have that ability to swarm in. Sorry about that. So on the other side, he does have some Pontic swords. Don't get me wrong, but you can see he's letting his hoplites take the brunt of this, and his... His Pontic Swords are kind of getting shots. You, know, He's got 12 kills. That's not bad. Sam Knight Warriors. Oh, look at that. We got a Scorpion over here. What is he shooting at, though? I think he might be shooting over here at the... Because he's shooting, like, over these buildings. Could have swore he was. I don't know. Oh, the poor naked sword's just getting slaughtered. Got the archers of Syracuse just laying into the mercenary naked sword. Oh, outside we got Carthaginian Noble Cav. Coming in, he is going to slaughter these Numidian Light infantry. Numidian Lights may be able to get off some javies. They might be able to get onto these towers before, but uh, at least one of them's gone. And these guys are going to be a little bit banged up before they get off the tower. He's going after, I think he's actually going for this unit. I think it's maybe because it's the unit that's not quite up the ladder. Now, there we go. I was going to say, so, like, you know, this is something I was really confused by. The Masace League player brought, I believe, three Gatuli skirmishers, horse skirmishers. Um, and he's just now bringing them into play. And then charging headlong onto Noble Cavalry. That's a terrible idea. Oh, man. Oh, that that was not a good idea. So what you want to play, so if you have these Cthulhu tribesmen, or the, the horsemen, they are a skirmisher cav, right? So one bonus you have here is you have the ability to kite this Noble Cav. And you can sit there, and as you're kiting, your, your tribe, your horsemen will be shooting them as you're running away, right? But charging headlong into a noble cab is just a death sentence by these units. They're, they're horse skirmishers. They are not shock cab, regular, you know, melee cab. Oh, that was a bad idea. And then sending the general in, once again, it's one armored Numidian rider versus two noble cavalry. Noble cab is not the greatest cavalry on the planet. Neither is armored Numidian riders. So when you put uh, 2v2, Armin and Midian for their price are actually pretty solid. Noble Cav are a bit expensive, um, but the fact of the matter is it's a 2v1, right? Like your Armin and Midian riders are just outnumbered by slightly better cavalry. And it's just, once again, I think you use your horse skirmishers, you zone out the Noble Cavalry. You could also zone out your the, the heavy horse here, because there is a heavy horse that also came out from Bowie Eye. Wow, 270 and 95. So this one has done most of the work here. It's the one that got the really good charge there, and then it's the one that got the really good charge here. The other Noble Cavalry, I think, might be healthier, though. No, this one is, too. So the, the one with more kills is also the healthier Cav unit. But then here you go. He's lining up. He's just going to finish off the Masasely General. And that's not good. Masasely's a, a a faction that is not really what you want to be without a general. Like, most of their units are disciplined, but they do have pretty low morale. Morale's not the greatest on their units, for sure. Get 
Top lights. I wonder, is he actually getting good shots here? It looks like he is, so. Because he is, it's one of those situations, it's kind of awkward, right? So technically he still is on his shield side uh, and he's almost more, you know, side of them where instead of, you know, more like behind them, but he still seems to be getting good kills. 135, wait, 135 and 69. So this one maybe isn't getting quite as good of kills. The one is pretty solid, 135. Good call by RDI, setting a unit right here at the gate, preventing any sort of sally out from the gate to be a nuisance. The cavalry over here is, yeah, honestly pretty much dealt with Misesely. Misesely does technically still have three units that they pr they may not know about. I don't think Carthage and Bowie, I actually realize that these units are here. And you can see you just saw the command order moving those units over here. Which, I'm going to be honest with you, Miss Aisley probably should have done from the beginning. I don't mind the idea of the potential push here eventually, but the initial push over in this direction I think was a bad idea. I think they really should have worked on getting more progress here, then moving to here, and then moving to here. Just use, using it as a three-step process, you know, Step one, step two, step three probably would have worked a little better. Masasely, I think, was just outmatched here by a, you know, bad choke point, honestly. You know, as they go in here, they're getting javied and shot. Then they're getting shot from the behind here. It's just not, was not fun. Syracuse really going in here. Syracuse has just thrown in pretty much all of his thorax and his Sam Knights, and is just basically daring Pontus to stop him. Hoplites at 77, 49, 26. Then you got 88 on this one. Pontic Swords, 96 kills, 87, 113. Uh, and then the Mercenary Naked Sword actually made it into combat. 60 kills. At least I assume it's what's left of this unit here. Now what's really going to suck here is since this died, now Bowie Eye and Carthage are going to be able to come over here and fully support this area, which is going to be far more like good for them i can't even think i like i don't even know what word to put into into context there um it, it's definitely not good for the attackers the attackers while there was the threat of the push here the the defenders had to respect it right they had to keep units over here just to prevent the possibility of a landing but now that that's dead they can fully support this and that is not what the attackers wanted So that, that's a bit rough, unfortunately. But it does look like the attackers are going to gain their foothold on the walls. So RDI now getting up with the Lyrian Hoplites. We've got a lot of Lyrian Hoplites. Silver Chevron to Lyrian Hoplites. Typically with RDI, you tend to see uh, really heavy Lyrian Noble Hoplites. Or you tend to, tend to see the, the Javi Strat. Um, which means bringing a lot of these guys, which are the Illyrian Thorospears, and then also bringing a lot of these guys, which are the Illyrian Marines, which also have a ton of javelins. But the Hoplites, once again, as we discussed earlier, do not get javelins, so he did not go for that strategy. Move it. Warriors on me. Get running. it seems like he was almost, it seems like he's almost kind of going for um, chevroning up the regular Illyrian Hoplite. To maybe save some money, although with all the silver chevrons, I'm not. I'm curious how expensive that unit actually is. Lyrian Thorough Spears going square formation while they get charged by some Levy Freeman. Got a Celtic warrior coming in behind. Celtic bows kind of just shooting straight into that. They were in square formation, so that would be a relatively good car target for kills. 
but probably not the best target for for value. I think one thing they want to try and do, they want to keep some of this ground here, okay? The reason they want to keep some of this ground is because they want this shot right here. That is a shot they really want as the defenders. Especially if they can keep at bay a lot of the attacking archers. Keep in mind that because of the attacking uh, factions, excuse me, they do not have the greatest archer force here, right? All you really have for archers is the Syracuse archers. RDI has, doesn't have archers, and I don't think he brought any range units. Then Masasely didn't bring archers, or can't bring archers, excuse me. And what I meant to say is he didn't bring really ranged units. He brought the ranged cavalry, and that's it. So the defenders definitely have that advantage. So if they can keep ground, like right here, then they can position like their Cretans, or honestly, I bet you these Celtics could probably make this shot. I honestly I almost guarantee they can make that shot. So the, this is a really good target for them. And honestly, I don't know that this is. He's shooting straight into the Illyrian Hoplites. Um, you know, it's, yeah, I don't think that's the greatest shot personally. You can see RDI is going to adjust his position to make it an even worse shot. I really, if I was them, I'd be holding their ammunition, coming over here, and then if the attackers decide to push that angle, you shoot the shit out of them. You know, that is your angle. That is one that is good for you. You can put your Carthaginian Balearic Slingers up here on the wall to basically zone out any of the attacking archers that might try to push you off. Seems like Bowie Eye, 75 kills. And once again, he's just shooting right into it. Lyrian Thorough Spears have a lot less armor than the, the Hoplites do. But it's still, once again, you're shooting straight into their front. I'm not sure that it's really the best target here. He's trying to get these Lyrian Thorough Spears to go away. See, the Lyrian Thorough Spears are sitting here jabbing the Celtic units. So I think Carthage is trying to, like, get RDI to go away. Now the Syracuse General getting up here, Thorax Hoplite. By the way, over on the side, we do still have the two cav units from Carthage, but I have not seen the cav unit from Bowiei in a while. That heavy horse he had out there, I don't see it anymore. So it could be hidden in some of these, some of these little forest areas. Oh no! Why, Masasely? Why? Desert Legionary just walking right through the gates. Oh, that's painful. Don't. Please don't. Or if you're going to, at least wait till this, like, neutralizes. Please. Okay, so it is neutralized. You should be able to go through it now. That was extremely painful. That was a very healthy Masasely desert legionary okay here's your chance here's your chance no stop i mean uh, that's not a bad shot but i do think that you could shift over here and make a better shot so it's, it's okay this is a this is a solid shot I saw one of the cretans is at 138 kills here pontus why 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 there's just not really a point to just shooting right down the middle here there are far better positions you could be using. Um, you know, come over here once again, or when Carthage is out, come into here, use this. Shooting like this is just, it's just not worth it. Bit of waste of ammunition, in my opinion. 99 kills. There you go, Derry. There you go, Derry. Lyrium Thorough Spears jabbing right into the sword followers. Oh, that hurts. He's got another, what do we got here? Hoplite and Lyrium Thorough Spear. Basically just keeping these Bowie Eye units attention there so that he can do this. Obviously this would be better if he came over here and did it, but it's a little bit more awkward. There's just the way the formation is set up. So this is what he's using, what he can get. Okay, Noble Cavalry is circling around behind, and here's the Heavy Horse. 
Don't have that much left outside. RDI still got some Marines and such. Um, I think the Scorpion is... No, he's firing, so he still has ammo. But I wonder if he's actually hitting anything. This is not the greatest angle here. It's at a really awkward slope. Oh, and look at that. Bowie Eye actually snuck around. I think he just was chasing off that unit. And a good Javi in the back there. Nicely done, RDI. But seriously, I still just I don't quite understand what the the decision or the point was there. Um, and I pray to God you're not about to throw another Desert Legionary down that path of destruction. But unfortunately, I I think he might be, and it's gonna it's gonna make me cry. It's gonna make me cry. All right, so see what you're doing here? This is what you should have done in the beginning of the battle. This is exactly what you should have done when you had your three units of Cthulhu horse skirmishers, is come in and, you know, kited them. Kite them. You know, zone out that Noble Cav. Noble Cav's trying to go for a charge here. He's going to get an okay one right into the back. He might break this Desert Legionary, honestly. And honestly, I don't mind this idea of Cthulhu horse skirmishers plugging this gap, but... Here comes the heavy horse, and you're going to lose your Cthulhu horse skirmishers now. So, once again, I think just a little bit of a misplay. He may get a good javelin toss here. Let's see it. Come on. Give me a javelin toss. Nope. I guess not. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. And now because the Desert Legionary broke, the, horse, or the Noble Horse can just go through. The other one's still out here, 284 kills with two chevrons. Heavy horse, 156 as well. I didn't even realize that. He's close to a chevron, but not quite there. Please, don't. Stop it. Stop it. Mesaisley, stop. Why go into the death? Just It's just death. Especially with units behind you. Orally. I just don't get that. And now over here, so that he, the attackers have pushed Bowie Eye back a bit, so they have lost this angle. Not that they were using it, but it's fine. Our Pontus is archers here. They're doing, they're doing okay. Yeah, they're just nuking RDI. Just, I, I really just think they could be doing a much better job with the angle that they're going at for this, sh for the shooting. Um, Karth just once again is okay, but it's it's fine. Celtic Bell's 146 is not bad at all. I guess Masaisley was able to actually get a little bit of a hold here, but honestly, what's going to happen now is I bet you one of these units is about to surround them and annihilate them. So, did it did it really do anything? Noble Cav gonna come charge him in the back. I'm gonna do the exact same thing as what the other one did. He's gonna charge him in the back, see if he can break him. And if he breaks him, then the Noble Cav just, or the Noble Horse just, yeah, Noble Cav, sorry, just goes in. Didn't quite break him, so he's pulling back. Got the Heavy Horse here, is kind of guarding the flank here, just preventing the attackers from feeling like they can go over here and stop this from happening. If the attackers really wanted to, they could go over there and stop it. But I, I really don't think they're that concerned about it. At this point, Masaisley has... Uh, he, he made the deal that he that he decided he wanted a deal, so... Played the play. And he's going to pay the price, so... Now, this could be a little bit bad over here. Look at this. Bowie Eye only has one unit here, so Artie Eye can just sneak right around. And all that's there is archers. 
That's it. Where are the armies here? Where are all the forces for the defenders? Pontus sending a Pontic, or a Hillman even, not even a Pontic sword, just a Hillman. It doesn't look like some of the defenders realized that this was the situation over here. They really need to get rid of this sword follower quickly. Although the gap just reopened, so if I was already, I would just keep this unit moving. Keep it moving. Keep this tied down. Uh, I think it's going to be too little too late. So Libyan infantry are going to come in and plug the gap. They may even come over here and deal with this first. Yeah, honestly, I think they will. And then I believe Carthage is now out of ammunition. He got good kills. Looks like I've about a chevron each. Pretty good, pretty good. Libyan infantry. They still got javies, so they're making good use of that. This, uh, look at this unit. Has only lost 13 men, and he has 124 kills. And almost a chevron, too. I think that's probably mostly from the Desert Legionaries early on in Masasely. Get some screenshots there. Got a another, or this is Lyrian Hoplite. So Lyrian Marines went in first. Lyrian Hoplite looks like they're gonna come in behind. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, they do. They're gonna annihilate this Hillman unit. Oh God. Actually, I think they're shooting at the the Libyans. And once again, you know, Pontus just, just shooting right at him. Angles, Pontus angles. Not angels, angels. And at this point, RDI could probably just go ahead and bring these units in, I bet. Nothing really to guard anymore, so... I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, an order for them to start. Yep, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Sorry, I thought that was pretty impressive. <laughs> that was right after I said, there, you know, said we would probably see it. Boom, there it was. Oh, uh, Libyan's just getting ripped up by that Javi fire. And once again, there's nothing else coming over to, to assist here. It's just this one unit. Do you have the Carthaginian Cav here? Looks like he's doing some, yeah, he's doing some some support. Archers here just shooting their ammo away. And here comes the Libyan once again, he's late. Oh no. Move your gen, run! Libyan Marines do have a bonus 20 versus large. I think they got four. Uh, I think this is lost. Syracuse is doing work over here too. This is keeping a lot of troops tied down. Bounce power, it looks to be decently in favor of the defenders, but it is very close. It is pretty well right down the middle. Got two Skitarians. Skitari are really good units. Uh, they typically will go toe to toe with your Thorax Swords and your Thorax Hoplites. Problem is, he only has two of these defending this. So, as you can see, Syracuse has like five units in this air general area. So, the two units are just outmanned. The Osworn helps. 
Yeah, this one is 113 kills. Oh, but he's down to 67 men. Ouch. Balerix, 92 kills, and they still have ammo. So curious as to he's not shooting anything at the moment. So honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see these Balerics just go back to the point at, at some point. Yeah, I think they're kind of giving up this area. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Carthage is regretting sending this one Libyan over here. Because since they're not going to send anything else, this one Libyan is basically out to die. He might get out of here, but he's going to take some losses in the process. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get out. These archers still have ammo. It doesn't look like it. That's a big oof because they don't have great kills. Oh, it looks like some of them have ammo. All right, so the Libyan's going to get out. He's relatively healthy, so that's good. Bowie Eyes General is gone, or will be. Carthage falling back to the point. Does look like there's still some Pontic units here as well. Obviously, we can't really see what's left back here, but I'm starting to be curious at why the Bounds of Power... It, it seems like it is far more towards the attacker's favor, just looking at what we can see, but obviously there are... There's got to be some units hidden here other than just this one Pontic or Hillman. It's not even Pontic Sword, it's just a Hillman. Noble Cav went back outside, 291 kills. And now for the second phase. So some thoughts so far in the battle here. Um, one re so this map is called Ailden, Ailden, Ilden, I don't know how to say it. E-I-L-D-O-N is how you spell it. Um, and it's not a commonly played map, mostly because there's one really big downside to it. The deployment zone for the attackers is way far away. It's really far. And so you have a really long ways to go to get to the walls on the, the best place to attack this map. And it takes so much time off of the clock. And that's one big downside to this map. Um, and that definitely happened. A lot of time was taken just getting to the walls here. Um, the attack... The one main thing, this went terribly bad. The, the Masesli attack over here was, it, it, it failed miserably. I hate to tell you that, that, but it did. Like I said earlier, I think if they were going to approach that, they should have done it in a staggered assault where they, they attack here, start gaining progress, then they move their attention to a bit more here, gain progress, and then they start putting pressure here. That initial attack allowed the defenders to basically just focus down Misesily with not that much of their resources used. Gotcha. Now, it looks like the attackers are going to primarily put their attention to this side. Does not look like we're going to get much of an exploit on the back. Although, look, right as I say that, maybe we're going to get some, some Syracuse units go do that. Pontus still has a little bit of ammo. Lyrian Marines, 152 kills. Nicely done. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out where the bounce power is. It could just be in some ammunition. Still got a, a Hoplite, Pontic Sword, Hillman. Carthage seems to be pretty much out of this match. He's got a Libyan, I think, probably back here defending the back end. It's somewhere back there. Bowie, I, I believe, is pretty much out of this match other than his Celtic bows.
Eastern archers went in. To be honest with you, I don't know that I would have thrown in those archers. I, I think this game is going to be close enough that you want as long... You need as much time as you possibly can get, okay? Which means that you can't be letting army losses kick in. And the best way to prevent army losses from kicking in is to try to keep your man count as high as possible. The best way to do that is to keep a hold of your out of ammo archers, right? Instead of just throwing them in willy nilly and just letting them die, you hold on to them as long as you human possibly can, okay? Now, obviously, desperate times call for desperate measures, but, you know, if you don't need to throw them in, don't waste their lives because that can really affect your army losses later on in the battle. One thing I'm noticing, I'm pretty sure Pontus is also still using formation attack and probably not the best situation for it. Ah, oh, Derry, you dirty, dirty bastard. Look at this. Ugh. Javi Strat is pain. It's pain. So still got Illyrian Marines, which means he still has ammo, man. So Syracuse did not take this advantage, but he is, so he, he's setting up so that he can use these archers to shoot Pontus, and so they can't come in and get, use their cav or something. They do have, still have Noble Cav running around, so that's something the defenders have to worry about. Balearic's actually pretty exposed here. 211 kills, nicely done Syracuse. 171 on an archer. Well done. Man, the, the defenders are so low on troops. They just don't have enough units to fill this very large gap on the final point of Eildon, which, as you can see, is right here. You hear the cab coming around, heavy horse of bow AI pushing over here. Where's the noble cab of Carthage is what I want to know. So one of them went outside, which means he's probably coming in this gate and is somewhere, somewhere, I don't know. I would bet that he is going to send the Noble Cab this way. No, look at that. He brought at least this one, which I don't, the one that went outside was a relatively large unit. It's definitely bigger than 15 men. This is very painful to look at. This is very painful to look at. This right here is very painful to look at. So the heavy horse looks like they just bypassed. Noble Cav snuck in. Getting a couple kills. Yeah, but this is this is not good. Very bad, very, very bad. Yeah, I, it, balance power is in the, like, dead even, but, man, I don't know. There's so many openings here that I just don't know. So 160, 150, two Libyans. A lot of RDI's units that he has left are not, like, super, super, really, really good. Maybe if they can get rid of the Illyrian Noble Hoplite General. Because a lot of Syracuse is pretty beat to hell. Man. I don't know. This is tough. Fire on 101 men, 120 kills. Leary and Noble Hoplites are actually really, really good. I say this as not a very big fan of Hoplites. Understood. Skitari, 114 kills. And then where did his... Wow, he's all the way up here. Look at that. So the Libyan infantry, like, charging forward down the hill...
You see him flip him over his shield? Oh, I love it. Right into the Libyans. Oh, God. There's a like, decent chunk of time left in this battle, and I'm trying to figure out how. Because, like, at this point, it really looks like we're in, in the end game. Which I still think we are in the end game here, but it definitely does not look like what time we have left. Oh, and yes! Heavy horse sneaking through the gap, you sneaky, sneaky. And Syracuse doesn't see it, but RDI does. Valyrian Marines turned right around and they're coming in and the Heavy Horse is going to get some kills, but he's going to die here. Noble Cav coming in, got a good charge on the Syracuse Thorax Sword. He might break it. Maybe a little early on the pull out there. Didn't really look like he got a full benefit out of that charge. Syracuse made the smart play. He is in Shield Wall, so it is minimizing the charging of the cavalry by a little bit but smart move by Carthage he just said well fine I'm gonna come over here then thorax way late on your your shield wall there man noble calf 313 15 kills 16 kills two chevrons almost three chevrons Mercenary Skutari, 239, 240 kills. He had three chevrons. Now he's up to one silver. This is a close game. I think it really comes down to, while they may not have a ton of troops left, the Carthaginian units that, they are, that are left may be a little bit better. The Libyan infantry, Skutari, so on and so forth. I think that's really what's keeping them in the mix. And the, the superb cavalry play here by the defenders. Well done. Warriors, Maybe he catches them in the in the movement here, in the transfer. No, I think a smart play get out of there. He's worried about Javi Toss. Which they don't look like they've got javelins left. These ones don't look like they do. It's hard to tell with the melee infantry. But typically with these guys, you'll see them holding their spears facing downwards. So the RDI general is dead. Carthaginian general is alive. Syracuse general is alive, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's alive. Bowie I general obviously is dead. Pontic General is dead. Very interesting battle here. I'm almost wondering if the Noble Cav could come up here and maybe catch some good charges here. There's a lot of open space here, so I wonder if he could catch that. Scutari, 298. Almost 300. General Cav doing a pretty good job. He's trying to get around, do some cycle charging in the rear and such, but I think he's gone. He might be able to sneak out here. Yeah. A couple of units kind of pulled through there, but I, like, I'm of the opinion there was a gap. It's hard to control what the individual units do, like the kind of random things. You know, if the unit primarily goes the direction that you said, which was open, I see no problem. Understood. Man. Syracuse seems to have pretty much all that's left here. Bounce power has shifted to the attacker favor though. Now, if 
the Cav play can continue doing what it's doing, they, they're still in this game. 358. See, what's the general at? 98. It's look at this. It's all it's archers and cav holding this defense together. Archers and cav, that's it. And just Carthage just doing everything he possibly can to try and hit the hit the morale of the of the attackers here cuz Carthage has his general still. The Syracuse general, I, oh man, is he still alive? That's huge. 43 men left. I mean, that would be very unlikely, but it's possible. He, I think he might still be alive here. Usually you'll see something say it's like general dead or something like that, generally recently died, yada yada. They're trying. Bowie I can't do much, but hope that his men, yeah, and there they are. So Bowie Eye's out. Where is the time is what I want to know. It could be maybe the general's bodyguard lasts for a little while. I'm not sure, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. Where is the time? The noble cavalry just broke or shattered actually. So it's the general cav. He's going after these archers. Once again, kills. You're trying to impact the army losses here. But I'm of the I'm of the opinion it's it's a done deal. It's a GG. Really all the defender or all the attackers have to do is just sit. Just trying to bleed some time off because, to be honest with you, I don't see any way that the Carthaginian general pulls this off. I get running. Move it. He's trying to stay in the zone to keep it neutralized so that he doesn't bleed off time off the timer of the countdown. Warrior. You can see he's just trying to stay in the zone. Okay, charges the weak unit. Good call. Thorax hoplite was not ready. He did knock down the unit, so he's just going on. They're trying to cut him off. Oh, uh, you know that Syracuse wishes he had javelins. Thorax Hoplay broke, by the way. Oh my god. You can't get me. You can't get me. You can't catch me. Ooda boo da boo. Another Syracuse unit. I don't know what he was doing over here, but once again, they're not going to catch him. Oh my gosh. What a pain. Then split right down the middle. No javelins. They can't, they can't even punish him for it. I think that's it. I think he's finally going to succumb to the army losses. 
Oh, he lost more men. That's why he lost a couple. He was at 17 men. Now he's at 14. Yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and finish this out. G G. He was playing for time. They were close. They were only a couple minutes off. All right, let's go, let's go look at some kills here. So first off, we'll start with the attackers. We got Dairy Farmer as RDI, 3,198 kills. Decently, I mean, a lot of his infantry did pretty solid. Um, the Marines did really good, 223 on the Noble Hoplite. GK as Miss Aisley with 1,039. We're just going to move on. Big Larry as Syracuse, 3,431 kills. Very, very well done, Syracuse. The Sam Knights really doing well, but look at the Balerics, 379, 279, 182, 183 on the Archers. I mean, that right there, that's, that's impressive. That's really good kills. 395 on a Thorax with three Chevrons as well. For the Defenders, wow, look at Carthage here. 3,287 kills coming in second in this game behind Big Larry on the attackers. The cavalry play, superb. Very, very well done. This cab play almost pulled this game back for the defenders. 385, 165, 189. Archers, look at that. Two chevrons, one chevron. All of his infantry pretty much doing really well. 252, 341 on the Scutari. Leovi, I think, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. 1,855 as Pontus. Archers, I definitely think you could have done better there. I think the angles you were taking were not the right ones. 202 on a Pontic Sword is pretty solid. Canadian Historian, 2,177. Once again, I'm pretty sure this is Goose from the Hungry Wolves. Another good cab play here by Bowie Eye, 266 kills. Only one Chevron there, but it, it's still pretty solid. Celtic Bows did pretty good. 181's pretty good there. Um, sword Followers, I definitely would have expected a bit better kel kills across the board. Um, just nothing really stellar there. No chevrons, but it, it, it's solid. Um, he really did take a lot of the RDI ammunition, so that's probably the biggest reason. Well, that is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.